Ultimately, to get the email address, you know, they got to give it to you somehow. Yeah. So either they're coming through your checkout, and hopefully they've checked out, in which case hopefully. they're now a customer, or they haven't checked out, in which case they're they're going to be getting your abandoned cart flow, and then in the future more emails to hopefully get them to eventually buy from you. So either they're coming through your checkout, or they're coming through some form of opt-in, or which, you know, on your site, like a pop-up, like an exit intent pop-up or yeah. pop-up that triggers after, you know, 30 seconds or after you scroll. You got to be careful with pop-ups so it can get very annoying. Or perhaps you've collected their email address from some other marketing technique, like a competition. Mm -hmm. So for instance, for a product launch, you might have driven people from a Facebook ad into a squeeze page for a competition, collected their email address where it's been very clear that you're asking permission that you will send, in addition to the results of the competition, you'll be sending them emails, you know, marketing emails and news, et cetera, about, about your industry or your, your brand. So, you know, that's another way to do it. Um, but ultimately somebody has to give you your email address. And my favorite way to get an email address is to give something in return for the email address, like a lead magnet, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I see a lot of websites where so for for example, you you have a newsletter, right? And people want to sign up for your newsletter because they're interested in this industry. But suppose we're talking about physical products brands. So let's look at the knitting analogy again, right? You're on the website, it's a, say it's built on Shopify, and you scroll down in the footer, there's a little box that says, sign up for our newsletter. No one will be signing up for that newsletter. Right. No one in the world is interested in signing up for a knitting newsletter. Newsletters are boring. But knitters might want to sign up for a guide on the 10 best practices when knitting a jumper, right? Give us your email address. We'll ping the ebook e PDF over to you. That's going to get a lot more signups than a boring new newsletters are really boring. I recorded a video about this the other day. Well, newsletters themselves aren't necessarily boring, but just the offer of signing up for a newsletter in itself is pretty boring. So giving something in exchange, whether it's a series of videos or an ebook or some kind of helpful guide that will get the email address. And from right. there, you've got to nurture, providing that free, compelling, helpful, useful, engaging content. And then you hit them with the, with the right hook and you ask for the sale. And that sale will probably be on your website, but you may well be launching a product on Amazon. We've talked about this on the podcast before where you could drive people over. Let's say it's just a simple insert over to your website. It could either be a landing page or it could be a pop-up, but where you're going to be giving them, let's say it's shampoo. So, okay, shampoo, here's a free sample of conditioner, but you give something that somebody wants. I, I've seen, just like you said, so many times I've gone over to a website that's promoting or asking for an email mm. and they give no value. Yep. You know, exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, people want a free bar of soap. You know, if, if you can give them a, a scent that's not available on Amazon, they're gonna give you your email you're going to send them a free bar of soap and you're probably going to gain a customer because they are going to love your brand yep. or you know you can cross promote just like you're saying some maybe some products that aren't aren't on amazon or that are on amazon and you're giving away a sample but it's something of value so yes yeah i i like that and what comes with that how much would you pay for an email address <sighs> I mean, you hear different things. I've heard people say they pay 10 bucks for an email address. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I don't like sitting on the fence, but I'm going to sit on the fence. The answer is it depends because it depends on your industry, right? It depends mm -hmm. how, how much, how much, what's your budget, right? What's your marketing budget? Uh, what's your margins? Are you selling high end premium products? Uh, are you selling, you know, more cheap and cheerful products? Neither of those is wrong, but it's certainly going to dictate what you can afford to fit, pay for an email address. At what scale are you doing this? Are you doing this in massive volume or are you not? So yeah, I'm sitting on the fence. The answer is it, it depends, but certainly, um, it, the, an email address is, is very, very important. And, and it's important that you recognize that n people place a value on their own email address, right? Somebody's inbox is a, is a personal and private place, and they're not going to let you just get access to it for nothing. You have to give them something of value. And that may well mean giving away even product, not just a guide. If, if you've, if you've structured your, uh, 
I guess, funnel, if you like, uh, well enough, you can give away the soap and, you know, get them on the, on the back end with, with, the, with, the, with the value ladder and mm -hmm. play the long game and look at the, the long term uh, value of that customer. Yeah, it's really just building a brand. Yep, building brand. And by the way, if I'm on the fence, I just say, how long is a piece of string there? Huh. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Same. Lunch with the lunch with the lunch.